you can think way faster than you can execute. Slow is smooth, smooth is fast, and fast wins the race. We train hard because we want to dive easy. Mm. Hi, and welcome to another episode of UTD Scuba Diving TV. Um, we're coming to you from Sweden, where we're just about to finish our uh, UTD Tech 2 class with these two fine gentlemen. Um, tomorrow we'll, uh, we'll do the final experience dive, where we go down to, uh, to look at the depths of these fjords here at around 60 meters, 200 feet. So it um, has been a challenging course. It's a bit of a different video format than you're used to, because I'd like to um, involve them a little bit in some of the uh, training experiences they have had during the week of training here and uh, and what they thought about the training and then what they thought about the perfect dive they've just done because we just came out of the water from a very nice experience dive number one and uh, and actually everything went quite well so uh, during the training obviously there were some hiccups and some mistakes made and some nice long video debriefs where we talk about what things could be improved and and how we could could be become better at uh, at diving. So um, Noah and Marianne, first of all, thank you for your hard work. Um, Marianne, what what did you think about uh, coming into the course? How did you what did you expect? One of my expectation was to to move a little bit, a little bit farther mm -hmm. after after my previous Tech One course. Yeah. So. And yeah. did you expect it to be harder than the tech one you you went through, or the same, or? Uh, yeah, uh, actually, I thought it <laughs> it would be harder, not not that, not that much harder. <laughs> yeah. it was it was really yeah harder in the way um, not just using more equipment and. Uh, decompression procedures and and so on uh, but also about the um, more fine tuning of, of yep. all of these 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 skills uh, like buoyancy like basic skills like buoyancy control uh, team positioning yep. yeah communication and that's a very yeah. good point because mm -hmm. yeah as you notice that the more task loaded we become mm -hmm. because of more bottles we need to manage we do the failures a bit more complicated than the previous levels. Mm. That takes a toll on the basics, right? And and yeah. the, the the further you've developed your basics, the, the stronger your foundation is. Mm. The more can you put on that, you know, pie diagram from the theory about where you can put your in your your mental investment, so to speak. We need to keep aware of situational awareness, environmental awareness, equipment, and team, right? Mm. And then the rest we can use for solving a problem or doing tasks underwater. And that's exactly what you said. And, and you were rightly so to expect that it's going to be a level above what you've done before. But some divers also come in, ah, well, I've done this and that's the 50 meters tech one. This is going one Tico bottle meter uh, to 60 meters. How hard can it be? Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, so, Noah, what, what did you expect coming into the course? Yeah, I expected it was going to be a bit bit harder than the previous one we did in Croatia. Yeah. But uh, it was actually much harder. Yeah. Especially you have to get used to using the leash. Yeah. Instead of just one deco bottle, then now you have two, and you have to rotate and everything. But yeah. when you get used to it, it gets a lot easier. Exactly. And that's kind of the topic of this little talk here is we we discussed it when when we we did the video debriefs that it was. You know, I'm really focusing on doing things super uh, controlled, yeah. Yeah. and and it's something I like to call we we train hard because we want to dive easy, mm. right? So yeah. if you train hard and make your training really precise and strive to do it almost demonstration quality, that will give you a buffer to when you're doing it in real life, maybe under a stressful situation because you just solved some kind of a failure. And then you have some buffer to give off of. Then it might not look as pretty to you, <laughs> but it'll still be under a bigger margin of control. Yeah. 
Whereas if we train and say, oh, okay, you did a, you did a, a bottle rotation with a leash. You went up and down a meter, mm. you know, that's okay because you're new. Yeah, yeah, exactly. If we just accept that under training, under controlled environment, because you're new, eh, when you then go out as a new diver and it's a bit stressed or a bit wavy, it's gonna look like uh. <laughs> you know, you've never done this before. Yeah. So when we just say, no, we'll just take five more minutes and do it one more time, yeah. mm. give you some tips during the video debrief and you became better, yeah. right? Yeah, exactly. So what, what did you think was the hardest part of the course? Or I say, the hard, not the hardest part, the most confronting mm. part of the course. There was two points because because I I came to Sand Mount mm -hmm. as a yep. Mount the first course yeah completely in that so I really had to get used to it a bit more and to to, to stay more with it yeah and combination of all of that with with dealing with real also and yeah. putting the line and exactly. Yeah, because I mean, kudos to you. You just started using uh, the UTD side mount system, and even though it's very similar to back mount, what you're used to, now the tanks are on your side, and you have to deal with that. So we yeah, spent no, a little bit of time, you know, on a on a crossover to the set system uh, prior, and then you done some couple of dives before the, the the course here, and yeah, but that's yeah, that's true. But yeah, but, uh, yeah when you deal with uh, a lot of deco tanks, uh, yeah. they have. Uh, Mm. A lot of situ situations you, you can expect is dealing with uh, inputs. And yep. yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. What about you, Noah? What did you think was the most confronting part of the... The bottom training? rotation. Yeah. Yeah, because that's new to me. Yeah. I have never done it before, so it was like pushing yourself yep. to a new limit. Exactly. And what, what was the biggest thing you've learned from that with regards to how to stay in control underwater? Slow, doing it slow. Exactly. I think that's a sentence we said a couple of times <laughs> during this week. Slow is smooth, smooth is fast, yeah. and fast wins the race. And it's it's true, right? I mean, if yeah. you slow down your movements, you can let your mind catch up. Yeah. And this is especially true in, in handling a lot of equipment underwater. So if you find yourself having to deal with either a complicated camera or a scooter, like we're gonna do in a minute, or yeah, in this case, multiple deco tanks, you can think way faster than you can execute. So if you only think about the steps and then expect your fingers and hands and body to react, yeah. all the while staying with your team on the line within a, a small margin of depth, you know, that can become quite tasking. So the only way you can do is just to slow down and a good tip is to just talk yourself in your mind mm. through the steps. So mentally hum it or, or just talk to yourself in your mm. mind about the step-by-step -step process. That'll actually slow you down because you cannot talk as fast as you can act. Mm. And that will actually help, right? That helped a lot for you yeah. guys. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Which was especially clear during the day's dive when you did <laughs> the gas switches and, and the, and the, uh, and the bottle rotation, right? I mean, yeah. the gas switch, it looked slow and controlled mm. and you both switched you know, each within a minute, you know, and that's very nice. I mean, that's, that's what we aim for. Right, very yeah. good, very good. So, now you've done some of the technical dives. Uh, tomorrow we'll do the final, um, final dive. Um, what do you think in the future? How, how are you gonna approach the tech dives? What, what was the thing you, you take away the most from, from this type of training? Yeah, I think this this training puts me into a situation that I really need to train more. Yeah. So so make also training at my own with with the closest location I uh, I can find, clo closest sites I can find yeah. to train in, and uh, and you find it's the simple things, eh? It's like what we talked yeah. about yesterday on the video debrief. Um, if you get complacent in small things, like for example, on the surface, you're checking your long hose deployment that it's free. Mm -hmm. And then when you route it, you just leave it hanging instead of clipping it off because we're going to use it in two seconds. You know, you do that too often. Eventually it's going to yeah. get caught or lost. Mm. 
So be very disciplined in the small things that you think are a bit of a nuisance. But if you become really disciplined in doing that time and time again, even though it's for two seconds, taking the rag out of your mouth, putting it there, talk, do whatever with your mask and taking it out again, it'll help you in the long run. Yeah, really. for sure. Yeah. What for about sure. team communication? Uh, how did that go? Because in the beginning, it's very common for a lot of technical divers moving up to ask if there's a hand signal for this situation, a hand signal for that situation, and a hand signal for this situation. And it's like almost every situation they can think of, they mm -hmm. want a hand signal. In reality, how many hand signals did you use? Five different or something. That's it. I <laughs> yeah. 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 You we can use, use almost use every up, hand we signal. We use OK, we use switch, we yeah, use yeah, next yeah. level. Mm. Yeah. Maybe we use watch me. Maybe deco, mm. the deco? question and... That's yeah. it. Mm. Yeah. So you find that when you train as a team, the team is aware about failures that are happening, uh, about the plan that every diver in the team can actually do this, do the plan, regardless of who is a, who is responsible for it. Let's say you're the deco captain, then you still should be mm. aware of of the deco plan. Yeah, for sure. And uh, eventual adjustments that were made, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Today. Who was the deagle captain? The man, in, yeah, you. So uh, you asked him a question, like at 12, hey, question mark, mm. how many minutes deco do we have? And you said, oh, one. Mm. Yeah, perfect. One, one more. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Very yeah. fast, very efficient, no one was in doubt, and it was super nice. So when you slow down, you have a lot more capacity in your brain to, to receive messages. And this mm. is also a key we talked about in the debriefing stuff that if you communicate something to another driver, you gotta wait for the response. You gotta look for the response in either their eyes or in the same hand signal back again. Yeah. Because a lot of divers, to get you to shut up, basically, they'll just do okay if, they, if you're saying something to them or asking them something and they don't wanna respond or don't have the mental capacity at the moment <laughs> to respond, they'll just say okay and hope that that was the <laughs> answer you were looking for. Mm. So, as a really good diver with great situational awareness, you will see a diver that is either a little bit stressed or task loaded and you'll wait with asking a question until they've calmed down or try to help them out with something. And, and I think that's what, some, uh, what, what, what really shines through in these upper level classes, uh, that humbleness about, hey, it's not all about me and my skills, it's about me observing, yeah. right? Yeah. And I remember many years ago when I just learned to drive a car, my dad told me that a good driver watches the traffic for mistakes made by other drivers and catches them and preempts them. That's what makes a good driver and I think, or driver. And I think the same thing goes for a diver mm. because we want you to look at each other, not to see, okay, there's a diver. No, we want you to look, hey, is there something wrong? Is the backup light switched on? Is the long hose un unhooked from a light canister or floating like a halo? You know, <laughs> is, is the leash not connected properly? Is the gas switch going correctly to the right gas? We want to really observe and look for small mistakes. Not because we want to point the finger, but just we want to make things as safe as possible and catch potential issues before they become a failure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the, the whole dog is uh, really a team responsibility. Yeah, thing. exactly. Yeah. It's a team responsibility. Yeah. And that's what relaxes each other and then be communication becomes like you did today. It's like, hey, like, yeah, let's move to the next level. Hmm. You know, the hand signal is like this to that. Perfect. Hmm. But you guys are so relaxed and calm and you both know the time. I could see you guys looking up at the same time from the wall, like looking at each other and then making the signal almost simultaneously. That's team diving. That's when it becomes a cohesive thinking uh, experience. And that's really nice to see, mm. you know? When I'm just filming you from, from behind the, you from, from back from the wall. That's really nice to see that you guys just are in tune and know what to do. So mm. Super good. So did you think I was too hard with you <laughs> during the course? <laughs> no, you gotta learn. So you can be honest. I mean, if it's, yeah, if it's too honest, I'll just cut it out. Yeah. <laughs> no, not at all. 
because you have to I learn. Have to, because I think it was as hard as it as it should be. So. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's a it's a balance. It's a, yeah. it's a tricky yeah. balance. Yeah. As an instructor, we have to find the balance to say, okay, how far do we push you? Right. Mm. Uh, I like to push so you can see your limit. Yeah. Mm. And if you yeah, see in your limit, then you've moved your limit. Yeah. And, mm. and you actually know the. Yeah. Some, yeah. Yeah. I think it's I agree. And if, if, if I let it go too far where you completely lose the plot and you have no idea what the hell you're doing underwater, yeah. what valve to turn and what failure to fix and everything, that's a mistake on my part. I made the curriculum too difficult, too fast. And it's very easy for me to do so. Mm, yeah, yeah, I can yeah. just you know start blowing that air gun left, right and center <laughs> until you get confused. Yeah. Anyone can get confused. Yeah, you, yeah. you put an instructor on me and he can shoot wherever like a wild western movie and I get confused eventually, right? So yeah, so it's but I think you guys did a did a great job. Uh let's see how you do tomorrow. If you deserve the certification of UTD <laughs> Tech 2 diver. Uh, it's looking good so far, but no promises. You have to survive tomorrow's dive. <laughs> <laughs> so um, for now, we're just gonna have some fun uh, scootering around here in the fjord. Uh, we rented some scooters from uh, Gulmars Fjord and Dugger Center here with Nicholas, who has been a fantastic host. Uh -huh. So um, perfect food, very nice accommodation, and he even he even made sure the weather is nice. You know, <laughs> in Sweden, there's like you have God, and then you have Nicholas, and then all the way down here come the rest of Sweden. Oh, that's a joke. No, it's a nice guy, very nice facility, so um, just have a lot of fun here, training and diving. So um, that's it for now. Um, I hope you found it interesting to have a little insight from the student's point of view about these courses. Uh, these tech courses are challenging. Mm -hmm. They can be very confronting, especially the upper level, because these two are good established divers. And then they get someone like me explaining them, hey, watch your finning technique and watch your, your trim. You know, I'm talking to them in some occasions like they're an open water diver, just finished last weekend. But we're constantly fine tuning so that they become the divers that they're on the route, on the route to be. So um, good, good job so far. Let's have some fun with the scooters and then we'll see how it goes tomorrow. Yes. All right, guys, thank you. Stay safe and uh, see you out there.